Okay, so we're on verse 5. It says, when others out of jealousy mistreat me with abuse, slander, and so on, I will practice accepting defeat and offering the victory to them. So this is another verse that uh, Americans can't stand. <laughs> because the idea of offering the victory to somebody else is antithetical to the country. So I'm teasing, but, but not teasing, you know? Because what lies behind this mind that cannot offer the victory to somebody else? What lies behind the mind that always has to be right, that always has to win the argument, that always has to get its way? And I think we all have that kind of mind to a greater and lesser extent. Sometimes we, we hold on and we fight until the very end. Um, have you ever caught yourself uh, continuing an argument that you know is unnecessary to continue? <laughs> Um, how about uh, arguing a point that you know is wrong? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, this is, is often the case. Uh, I mean, I know myself. It's like sometimes I'll be saying something and it's, you know, uh, I actually believe what the other person is saying. Yeah. And what they th said has more reason than what I'm thinking. But I don't want to give up my pride and be wrong. And, you know, because what's worse than being wrong? Um, you know, and so continuing to argue a point. So this verse, I think, really hits uh, on our pride. You know, uh, our, the attachment to being right, it's hooked in to attachment to reputation, yeah, because there's this feeling that if I give the victory to somebody else, that then they will take advantage of me the next time, that then I will lose standing, that then people won't respect me, and so we cling on and we argue a case, yeah. Um, sometimes it, it happens. You know, and, and different, differentiating that situation from a situation where we know that what the other person, let's say, is doing or saying or what their position is, is incorrect. <clears throat> and I'm not talking about philosophy. I'm talking about behavior so much. Um, and they're holding on to it. Yeah. And... What do we do? Yeah, do we? They're holding on to their position. They're not gonna succumb. So we feel we have to hold on to our position and not give in either. And then the argument really reaches an impasse. And both people, well, it's hard, you know. It depends what the, the situation between the people is. Sometimes it's a case where both people are holding on to pride. Some people, it's a case where uh, one party does no more and is correct. I'm thinking of a, a situation where there's danger involved and somebody wants to do something dangerous and the other, and the other person is saying, hey, look out, but the first person won't, uh, you know, kind of listen, they're holding on. Then the second person, who's really arguing their point because they care for the first person, do they give in? Do they, you know, how, how do you deal with that kind of situation? You know, and that can really be a tough one. Um, you know, especially when somebody's really clinging on to a position that uh, could, you know, potentially be very, very harmful. Yeah. So this verse is talking about when we're doing that, which is easier to solve 
I think, sometimes than when other people are doing that when we're in a situation. You know, sometimes like a parent with a child or, um, yeah, just where somebody has more knowledge than the other person. That can be quite difficult. But to, to um, you know, that's one situation here. But to take a look at, you know, when we hold on to a position out of pride, yeah, uh, because we may be angry, yeah, but we hold on to the position because we're full of pride, yeah. The anger isn't why we hold on to the position, it's the pride. Um, sometimes, you know, what we really want is just for somebody to hear us and, uh, you know, we need some empathy or we need some understanding. But we, we don't say that. We say, you're wrong and da 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 Okay? So there's all this miscommunication that's going on um, because we don't see our own pride. We're not aware of our own need for uh, to be heard or to be acknowledged. Yeah? So we get uh, really stuck in those situations. Uh, so it's good, you know, if we can learn to, uh, to figure out what it is we really need. You know, when we're arguing a point ad nauseum that uh, isn't getting us anywhere and it's done out of arrogance, then to ask ourselves, what am I really needing in that situation? Yeah? What, what is really going on? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, that's something uh, to think about. Anybody have ideas when you think about situations? Have you ever done that? Yeah, you, you admitted to some of it. What's, what's going on when, when you argue a point like that? It's interesting to watch the mind when, when you might admit you're wrong to one person but not to another. So there's an element of not wanting that person to be right because you're annoyed at that person to begin with or something. Yeah. Yeah, and then they'll just like, I don't know, maybe expecting them to react different than another person would do. Uh. I know that when, when somebody admits they're wrong or apologizes to me, I try to be very accepting of that because it's, otherwise you create a situation where people don't want to do that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it is interesting how sometimes we're willing uh, to accept defeat and give the victory to others, to one person but not to another person. Yeah. And to, to really, again, look at that uh, within us. Why? What, what is going on? You know, I'll admit that I'm wrong to this friend, but I won't admit that I'm wrong to, to that person. Yeah. What's happening? This morning something happens. Like I was told that I um, took the food away too early or, and for, in my mind, I didn't took the food away. I just left the spoon of the bowls that they have used and I left it there. I put the lid on it, but everybody were chatting, da, 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 da. And, uh, but so I, I will, but behind that is what I know is that I, I'm a type of person, quick, quick, done. Mm -hmm. And I disturb people. So I know that, I know that is behind it. Mm -hmm. But first, when it comes, like, come on, guys. I left a spoon in the bowl. Come on. If you need it, you just remove the... But that's not it. The problem is you're too quick to get your things done, and you disturb people. Mm -hmm. That's what is behind, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Yeah. So my mind goes, okay, tomorrow morning, I'm going to sit like everybody else, and I won't do the dishes. Hurry up and eat, guys, because you're doing the dishes tomorrow morning, yeah. not me. Okay. <laughs> so. I'm 
not solve. <laughs> yeah, but, um, but you know, that's good. If you recognize, okay, you have a different style of doing things and it disturbs other people, you know, then you know that you can avoid the whole argument altogether if you just slow down a little bit, yeah? Yeah, or if you don't attach so much value to your way of doing things. Good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anybody else? <laughs> yeah. This morning when I was in the kitchen, I was putting away the dishes from breakfast, and um, I could not figure out where this one like cooking tool was. I was pacing. I was so upset. I couldn't find it. And I was like, who put it in the wrong spot? Why would they do that to me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It actually might have been a spatula kind of thing. But anyway. And I was like, it should be this way. There's no reason why it's not this way. And somebody did it wrong. And my way is absolutely 100% right. And I was going through all the scenarios of why I'm right in my head. Like, some of it was actually out loud, too. <laughs> and, uh, and then it... It's just such a small problem to be having, and I was so upset over it. Mm. Um, and there's no way of offering the victory to the other person. I still think that I'm right, so I gotta work with that. But the like non-negotiables, like my way or the highway, I have to work with that. Yeah, especially in the kitchen. Yeah, the kitchen seems to be a real hot place for holding on to <laughs> a position that I'm right and other people are wrong. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing uh, how that is, you know? And it's like I said, I tell people there's three things you're not going to like at the Abbey. The way the kitchen is done, people always have complaints about that. The schedule, some people dig, dig their heels in about the schedule. They don't like it. And uh, the chanting. Yeah, and so we have an opinion, and we just hold on to that, and, you know, this mind, like you were saying, of there's one right way, and I have it. Yeah, and so that's, that's the mind that precedes the whole argument, but sets up the argument, yeah, is the mind that says there's one right way to do something, yeah. The, the cups have to be put in the cupboard right side up, you know, not upside down. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and those people are wrong because they should be upside down. That's how I was raised. That's how you were raised too. So you're right because you agree with my ideas. No, you're right because you agree with my ideas. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute here. <laughs> So, you know, it's quite interesting when you look at this and you see how our mind sets us up for so much suffering. Because when we have that kind of argument over who's right and who's wrong, everybody suffers, you know. And we see it in politics, don't we? And we see it in relationships between different groups. You know, so everything we're learning in Dharma, it applies at all levels of human communication, you know? And our side is right. You know, when you read the news and you see how the news is written, sometimes, you know, one group is presenting this view, one group is presenting that view, Every, everybody's right, yeah? And then we argue. Just this morning, I was reading an article in the Times about a high school, a George Washington High School in San Francisco, and it has some murals that were painted uh, during the Depression, and the murals were of George Washington. The artist who painted the murals was a communist, and he, uh, often in his art, tried to debunk the glorious um, legends about the founders of the country. So in his mural, he painted George Washington pointing west uh, 
over a, a, a dead body of an Indian. And he painted George Washington's slaves working at Mount Vernon. And at the time of the Depression, you know, many people liked his art. And, you know, he was kind of starting, and I, I suppose in San, in San Francisco, people like that. You yeah. know, other parts of the country, they probably thought it was blas blasphemy. But, um, you know, he was trying to expose what was really going on. Nowadays, there's students uh, from all sorts of races and backgrounds at the high school. And, um, you know, many of those students would like the murals removed, yeah, because they show a history that's very painful for their own racist group. So there's now a discussion, and every group is split. The students are split, the educators are split. Some say it's a historical thing, and the Arthur, the uh, the painter had a good intention. We should leave those things so that we can really point out, uh, you know, look at the reality of George Washington. You know, he, there was no cherry tree in the murals. Um, and other people are saying, no, what they depict is white colonialism, and we want to, you know, we should get rid of it. And uh, they can't remove the murals because it would be too expensive. It, they would have to be destroyed. Okay, so there's controversy about that too. Yeah, but it's interesting be, because, you know, everybody has an opinion. Both parties are liberal politically. Yeah, and yet they have different opinions about what should be done in the case of these murals. And, you know, again, we dig in our heels and we, we fight for our way, even though, in this case, the underlying principle that, that is trying, you know, uh, that people are, are trying to express, which is not non-discrimination, they agree on. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's take a look at that thing where we get attached to our viewpoint and attach to being right and argue um, incessantly. Okay.